Good morning again. Isn't it a beautiful day today? Just a gorgeous day. Now we need to, to, we need to uh, take an offering for an air conditioner unit. I want you to say amen to that. <laughs> now would be an appropriate time. <laughs> Just a little bit of manipulation, huh? <laughs> anyway, welcome to this Father's Day service. It's a great, uh, great time to get together. And I know lots of dads have either been together with their sons or grandsons or about to uh, experience that this afternoon. We want to, again, um, bring to your attention about um, a young a young man by the name of Brayden Elizabeth who just got back from the United States there about um, eight weeks. You guys are, were there, I guess, in America, visiting with some family and friends. And so let's just welcome officially back Brayden Elizabeth. Let's give them a hand and good to have them. So they are going to be um, overseeing the young adults there tomorrow night. And it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. And then um, lots of good things there, as Elizabeth said, throughout the week. You know, I know a lot of us have heard the story about Brian and about Braden before, kind of their story about salvation and, and um, you know, the awakening days. For those of you that are not familiar, we had a Friday night here called The Awakening in which there was a lot of young people, young adults, or those that wanted to feel young, and they would uh, come out and they would just get, really get a touch of God. And um, I really appreciated the word there that was actually brought to one of our senior intercessors, Rena, and she said, I just really feel the glory is coming back. We do sense there's something, there's something that's up. We talked to a number of city uh, fathers and mothers from the Vancouver area and uh, the valley here on Friday, and there's just something brewing. And it's more than about a, a church, it's more than about just a denomination, but it's about a family. And that we're about to experience something I really, really believe phenomenal. So keep the hunger and keep the thirst up there because God's going to fill us. And so we're, we're going to go a little bit different this morning, ladies and gentlemen, because um, a lot of you, probably most of you, with the exception of some family members to the halls, don't know about uh, aspects of their life revolving around unity and reconciliation. Now, there's been that theme that's been hitting us for the last Sundays, and it just doesn't happen on a Sunday, guys. It's been happening every day, and we're just simply celebrating it on Sunday. When you say reconciliation, what do you mean? We're talking about where there's been awkwardness, offenses, hurts, um, just different things that have been going on in the hearts of, we're talking, a lot of it is Christian to Christian. I mean, it's one thing to say, well, I, I don't get along with my family. I don't get along with my brother, my sister, my uncle, my aunt, my grandpa, my, my grandma, whatever. But a, a lot of this has been existing and still is existing in the churches. And how many you know that the Bible does say that, that, first of all, judgment must begin in the house of God? And then when it begins with us, otherwise God, uh, he cleanses us, and then he starts looking out there to the world. And so, so Brian, being a dad, Again and again, all right? And uh, that's why there's uniqueness to that. And Brayden is the dad. Like this morning, I came in here and I said, Happy Father's Day, Brayden. Well, Elizabeth's only seven plus months pregnant, but he's a dad. How many know he's an actual dad? He's a dad. And um, Justin running our cameras this morning, I said, Happy Father's Day, Justin. And it's like, well, like, okay, but I'm not really a father. He didn't say that, but, but I, you, a lot of times we got to get that around our head. June is actually pro-life month. And so, so when you're four months pregnant, five months pregnant, six months pregnant, whatever, you are a dad. Yeah. You are a dad, you know? Um, and, and, uh, Braden mentioned Andy, Andy in the back. Andy, in fact, Andy knows so much he's a dad. He's got a hat that on the back of it says dad. I saw it. So he's, he's got no problem. And so guess what? Those three guys, and there might be some more of you here this morning, have graduated where for the first time in our Father's Day service, you get to have an ice cream. <laughs> so, so if you're a dad or a granddad, now the, the grandpas get two, the fathers only get one, and the great grandpas get three, okay? I just made that rule right now. <laughs> And so, if I don't know if the cameras can close in on um, on Papa Brian's shirt there, but it talks about what you know, Dad is good, but then he now you get promoted to a granddad, to a grandpa. There you go. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Great dads get promoted to grandpas. And so, that being said, a lot of what Brayden was talking about this morning was just this fire, this heart, this fervency. Zachariah is talking about back in our heart. We don't want to be just good dads, but actually we want the fire of God on the inside of us. I think that's the greatest gift you can give your sons and daughters or your grandchildren is to stay fired up for the Holy Spirit. 
right? And so there, that always wasn't the case. So when we deal with unity and reconciliation, the key word here this morning is perspective. We found out Brian's perspective concerning some things that were going on in Brayden's life when, when, they, when he was being raised by his dad and mom were different than Brayden's perspective. And a little bit of the story of the prodigal, Luke chapter 15, where it talks about, you know, the father that gives the inheritance to the youngest son. He squanders it all. And then the son comes back there in Luke 15, and he says, oh, I'm not even worthy to be called your son. Like, man, I just, like, help me. Just, I just want to feed the pigs, or I just want to go out there and do the, the menial chores. And the dad says, hey, wait a minute. You know, where's the ring? Where's the robe? Where's the sandals? The father's perspective was way different than the son. And if there's one thing that we as fathers and grandfathers can give to our sons and daughters is that affirmation. How many of them today are, are, are laden in the orphan spirit we don't feel worthy? I mean, on the outside, you're kind of looking like you're a cool shot. But deep, deep on the inside, the re deepest recesses of your heart, you're really, really not feeling that. And that's why the Father brought that affirmation. So, Brian, kind of want to start there with you because um, Brian is originally a prairie, prairie uh, stubble jumper out there in Saskatchewan bush. And uh, we have a lot of relationship concerning our stories, hauling bales, blah, blah, that kind of a thing. But I wanted him to share just a little bit concerning, again, this perspective that some of you, you see Braden and Brian today, dad and, and son, but it wasn't always like that, you guys. You know, it, God bless you that you see them in so much unity and harmony, and they love one another, and this is a unique relationship. But I'm sure you're aware that pre-Christ, like Braden said, it wasn't always like that, okay? So you, Brian, share a little bit on your heart concerning some of your perspective. Well, thank you, Ken. Um, don't want, I didn't want to be up here sitting here. So when you ask me, I'm like, ah. Uh, because we've told our story many times and you guys know our story and I'm thinking Ken let's find someone else with a story everyone has a story right everyone has a story so we could have other uh, families dads up here with their son or daughter um, and so I you know when you told me so then I phoned Braden I said I don't want to do this I don't think we should be the ones you know and uh, we got talking it's like yeah you know let's and we started to try to think who should be here instead of us so we we're like what about this what about this and you know let's phone Ken and but we kept talking and then we started to talk about we got into our relationship and started to discover some things that we've never talked about together him and I before and just how it went for him and how it went for me and then by the time time we were done an hour later or something said maybe maybe Ken's right maybe when Ken said I keep seeing your faces I think you should be uh, here telling this story okay maybe he's right but maybe we could still get another you know couple or two anyways so Ken uh, and then I then the Holy Spirit said you know what Ken's Papa he's senior he's older than me I'm old, but he's older than me, okay? <laughs> and, and so we have to respect that. He's the father in the house. So like, you know, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, Ken, you're right. We, we were wrong, so we're here, okay? <laughs> so forgive us if you heard our story. But we're going to tell a different part of our story that you may never have heard. So that perspective of, uh, you know, the prodigal, uh, I, didn't, I didn't let Braden go from my home and go, you know, spend the inheritance and all that. I actually kicked him out. <laughs> I just booted him out. Like, he was 16, maybe just turned 17. And I'm like, if you do this one more time, and what he was doing, he was, he was dealing in pot, and he was bringing it into the house. And my wife at the time, Lois, was like vacuuming it up in his bedroom, you know, because he's messy, even in his uh, everything. And uh, come on. <laughs> And uh, so second time, we said, don't you ever do that again, you know. And uh, second time, and a week later or something, there it is again, vacuuming up. This is, you know, the bud off the floor. And then we, I said, if you ever do that again, you're gone. You're not living with us. Like this is, well, it's risky, you know. We don't want to drive by shooting or something. Uh, and, uh, and, my, and my wife had put up with you since you were like, 10 years old and you were like so that was and you know when we got I got married the second time so you know I don't know what you think about kicking your son out just because he's you know he messed up three times and you just there's the door don't let it hit you on the way out right <laughs> and so so I felt about that in, 
over the years, did I make a mistake? I think, you know, maybe I did. Maybe I should apologize to Braden because that, that really messed him up. And he'll tell about that. But on the other hand, it wasn't just that. I mean, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. If you raised this kid as a, <laughs> come on now, as a baby, like you know him now. Can you imagine? His grandparents didn't like him. They liked his older brother, but like not this one. Like, don't bring him around, right? He was just bouncing off the walls. You had to like catch him by the head and yell in his face to get his attention. And it, I don't know what he had. Like, it, I don't know what he was doing. But anyways, it was difficult young. And then he, when he became a teenager, teenager, it was even harder. And then with a stepmom, that was even harder. And so it just got worse and worse. So that like that at the end, it was like out of here you know it wasn't just you know we think that one thing and I thought did I make a mistake and the Lord hasn't told me so I don't know did I make a mistake or not but it messed him up and for me it wasn't a big deal it's like hey I left home when I was 16 you know I got married when I was 18 like hey come off a farm I, I you know you you raise the animals you take care of the cows you milk the cows you make the hay bales you're driving tractors when you're 10 or 11 you're driving cars when you shouldn't be I won't say the age you're selling cars before you have a license so I was yeah no I had I sold like seven or eight cars I didn't even have a driver's license right so I, no seriously so I I'm used to making money I quit listen I quit grade eight you know why? I quit school in grade eight because I couldn't make money going to school, right? Now, now this guy never had a job. He's just at home going to school, and then there you go. So it was different for him, but my mind is, go get a job. Like, take care of yourself if you're going to live like that in our house, right? right? But it was different for him. So that, that's kind of the story leading up. So there, in that, there was a breaking of a relationship, okay? Because we, we were close. Now, we still were friends. But something shifted in in his heart. Okay, so I don't know if you want him to share a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. So that's now that's Dad's perspective, that's Brian's perspective. You know, and they didn't even know until they were doing some deeper conversing with one another how Braden felt toward this. See, we as dads have a perspective because of the age we're at, and because of the testimony and the experience we got. Braden's story was. He's mature. He's independent at 15 and 16 years old. A little bit different story from Braden's part. Braden, share your perspective. Neither one of them is wrong. It's just a perspective. And I think this is important in part of the reconciliation. Go ahead, Braden. Yeah, well, it's like, you know, you have these moments in your life where they mark you, either good or bad, and they almost burn into your memory. Uh, I just praise God for the blood because it's all under the blood now. But I remember when I was... Uh, 16 and yeah i remember the third time that uh that i'd left some pot in the house in fact i was selling so much pot to be honest that i actually would forget at times and they would find find pot in the house and my dad called me and said uh brayden you're out you're out of the house basically and i was out doing what i was doing and i remember like for a couple of days it didn't sink in but i was staying at my friend's house randy and uh, his mom was a heroin addict, actually. All of his family members were addicts. But I literally had nowhere to go where I could just move in. You know, last minute, can I just move into your house? So I was staying at his house, and I wouldn't even sleep inside the house because there was needles, like, everywhere. Needles and crack pipes. And I was like, man, I don't want to step on a needle. Literally, that's how bad it was. And it took a few days to sit in how low it had gotten. And I thought to myself, I'm sleeping underneath a carport on this couch it's summertime, of course, but what's, what's going to come in a few months? I'm, I'm homeless. Like, I'm literally homeless. And the pain was like, if you want to talk about the orphan spirit coming in and attacking you in that moment, it was escalated to the 10th degree because I called my dad on the phone and I was crying. And I said, Dad, like, uh, you know, I promise you this time I've changed. Now, now the truth is, yeah, right. <laughs> like, like my dad said, even if I would, would stop drinking or stop selling drugs or whatever, he didn't think I had it to change my character overnight. So doing the dishes, cleaning up after myself, even all the other things that hadn't changed yet. And I, my perception was that Lois had had enough and that my dad was, his hands were tied kind of. And he, from what I remember, and I might've remembered this wrong, but that he was saying, listen, even if I wanted to take you back, I have to be a man of my word. I told you three times and Lois has had enough. Like, she's not wanting you to come back, my stepmother at the time. 
And so I remember hanging up, and, he, and, and I was just crying, such a deep cry, saying, Dad, please, I promise I'll change. I didn't want to be homeless, right? And my dad said, why don't you call one of your uncles, one of your relatives? But here's the thing Ken mentioned when he started. Ken mentioned about family, how important family was. Well, I wasn't willing to pick up the phone to call my uncle, not because he might or might not take me in, because there's no deep relationship. Like, I didn't feel comfortable enough that he was a close enough family that I could pick up the phone and say, hey, would you take, my dad kicked me out, I don't want to talk about why, would you take me in, right? Like, what, what's my uncle going to think? Okay, yeah, come on in. So, yeah, I remember. We'd call him and let him know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that was a real moment, I guess, Pastor Ken, for me, that was like, in my mind, I said, okay, I'm going to make as much money as I can because I don't want to be homeless, and I'm going to prove my dad wrong and prove everyone else wrong. I'm going to get my own place and, 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 and get my own life on track, but in the wrong way, basically. Wow. So then, so then that experience for you, Braden, developed, like you said, almost like an open door. The barn door is wide open. Orphan spirit comes in unbeknownst probably to you, Brian, because you're thinking, nah, you know what, you're 16 years old, you can take care of yourself. I took care of myself, right? And because you're a man of integrity, a man of your word, I stand by my word, okay? So then not knowing, Brayden develops this, we call it an orphan spirit. Orphan spirit simply is like, it's this spirit or it's an attitude or it's a mindset that's, that never, uh, you never feel you belong. You can be in a room just like this, you guys, but somehow you always feel, I don't belong. And because a filter is in your mind and in my mind, because there's rejection. Sometimes that rejection, what happened with me is the rejection happened at me actually from birth. And a lot of times that'll, that'll take place. It wasn't even my mom's fault, but there was incidences that happened that catered to that where often people come right at birth and there's a rejection. So you feel, it's not true, it's a perspective, but understand this, your perception, get this, this is important, your perception is your reality. We all say, well, I want to live reality. Well, well, your reality is how you perceive. Your perception could be wrong. Get that. Your perception actually could be wrong. Brian's perception could be wrong. Braden's perception could be wrong, but it was both of their realities. And that's why the need for conversation, the need for communication, and we, in psychology, we call that misbelief. They say that on an average day, you tell yourself 300 lies in a day. 300 lies in a day. And that's why we are who we are. You know, you look at yourself in the mirror and some of us can't even look at ourselves in the mirror. And we, we hear in the echoes that have been spoken to us from the generations, from the authorities that are in our life. You're no good. You're never going to amount to anything. You know, you're blah, 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 blah. And you actually assimilate that subconsciously and that's who you become. Okay, so what, remember, what you think about, you bring about. What you think about, you bring about. And that's why the importance of being able to dialogue when Braden and, and Brian got to talk with one another about some of the deeper things in the recesses of their heart, they began to realize, gee, I didn't realize that that's how, how it was with you. So Brian, I mean, Braden now, he's got to feel in his own heart, hey, I, I got to make it on my own. So then you got deeper into some caca, didn't you? Just share just really briefly what happened. Like, where were you going on the deep end? Well, yeah, just a lot of you guys know my testimony, but it just escalated, right? It wasn't just pot anymore. I started selling crack, coke, and heroin. I started growing pot. I started, uh, you know, everything the world could offer. I bought a limousine. I hired a guy to drive me around, and it was the pride of life. I, I, I needed you to think that I was successful in order to feel good. If, if I was out somewhere and you said, wow, Bray, I could be broke. Listen, I could be broke, but have a limo, have a street bike, and buy all these things. But then you would look at me and go, wow, like you're so successful. How do you do it, Brayden? And that's what got me going. Because now I feel valued based on what I'm doing. That's orphan spirit to the core. I'm working to earn. Just like in the Christian walk, guys, never try to earn with God. You already have a table seat with the Father in heaven. You don't have to earn anything. Everything's been purchased for you and it's a gift. That's why it's a love relationship. So that's why the orphan spirit in the world was money, clothes. If I had an entourage with me, then I felt, I felt valued. And it just escalated with the poker. I started playing poker. I remember my first playing poker ever. I lost like $40. And I, I was just crushed. But I, 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 mean, I mean, I was so excited even though I lost a little $40. 
But I remember playing poker and starting to get into the casinos and then talking the talk at the table. If I could out-talk you, if I could outwit you and everyone at the table would go, wow, Brayden, how did you do it? it I felt valued. I felt love. I'm, everyone trying to seek for this fake love. It's a facade. And then, at the same time, Brian, didn't you and your wife go actually down to join him in some of the casino tables there um, uh, when he was down in Vegas? Yeah, so what, what, what was... See, I, di I didn't have the perspective that he was orphaned. I thought our relationship was fine. I didn't really realize that there was this... Uh, we needed reconciliation and all that. It was all good. Like, we talked. We're friends. We, I talked about every time he called me, hey, what car should I buy or what should I eat for lunch or whatever. He's calling me. You know, I didn't think we had a break in a relationship like that. So... Uh, we would, he would be playing a tournament, like a $10,000 buy-in World Series down in Vegas, and we would just uh, fly down and surprise him, come up behind the table, tap him on the back. Hey, what? You guys are here and watch him play. So I actually started playing poker too. <laughs> you know, I was playing poker when we came to this church and kept playing for a while. Like, it took me a little while to give it up, but it wasn't because... I was an addict. I wasn't addicted. It wasn't a gambling thing at all for me. Now, it was gambling for Braden. He can explain that. He was an addict. He was addicted. It, it was really hard. for he, gave, he was able to give up everything else. Poker was the hardest thing for him. For me, it was fun. It's like, like you pay to go golfing, right? Or you pay to go watch the Canucks play uh, hockey. And, and it costs you money, and you enjoy it. That's what I did. I had more... In, enjoyment sitting at a poker table trying to figure everybody out make the right move especially if you make a move you got you know all in no cards and everybody believes you and they back off and you take the pot you know so it was a lot of fun for me so I got playing and, and so but again perspective my perspective was completely different my reason like I right now I think about it from time man I'd like to go sit down at a table and play some poker because it's so much fun I grew up in a in a 40 below, six months out of the year, Saskatchewan farmhouse, and we played games. There was 11 kids, we just played games. And boy, we were competitive. And if we got on the ice, we were even more competitive. And so being competitive, I enjoyed it. Like really, like really. So although my parents didn't, like my mom's not here, thank the Lord, because, because cards were of the devil, right? I, I had to get over that, like even looking at them. Oh my goodness, they're, uh, you know. Anyways, that was my upbringing. I don't want to take too much time, but. So, there you go. I, I would just add to that, like, this might be walking on thin ice, to be honest, but to my dad, it wasn't a sin. I really believe that in my heart. Because my dad could play. He wasn't addicted. He wouldn't sit at the table and tell as many lies as he could to try to get your money. Listen, I, that couldn't, I couldn't lie. My mom said, all liars go to the lake of fire. And I, don't, I wouldn't lie, right? So he, he wouldn't even, he would just read the people, play the game. He might chit-chat and stuff. But me, I'll tell you, I was a lying, cheating, thieving. Like, I'll, I'll just be honest. Like, I, now I can be totally transparent and honest. If I got you the table, I would talk as much as I possibly could. If you said even a sentence, I got you. Like, that's how I would, I would learn the game. But I prided myself in that. That's the problem, right? And so uh, I, I'll actually just share this. I remember coming into the church, and it was the last thing really that I really gave up was the poker. I remember we went out and played a tournament together, and my dad wouldn't go play the 10,000s or the big, he'd play a $100 or $200 tournament. We drove to Richmond, we played this tournament, and on the way home, I said, Dad, I don't know, I feel like it's a waste of time. I feel like I'm wasting my time kind of, and, and also the emotions I felt when I sat down at the table after not playing for so long, uh, it, it, it was different. It was like, man, I feel, I feel angry, upset. There's different when I lost. And I hadn't felt that for a while because I got saved in two, three weeks. I was serving God. And I remember, uh, I, I, now to this day, I, this might sound crazy, but to this day, I actually believe an angel of the Lord called my telephone. How many know that the Bible's filled with angels and encounters in the Bible? And that that's not just for Old Testament and that's just not back then. That New Testament, there was encounters with angels. So I, I sold cars for a long, long time, my whole life, and I was selling this Cadillac, and I, I, I was like, I'm not going to play cards anymore. And this guy called me from Squamish, and he said, could I meet you somewhere in the middle? You're an abbotsford. Could, would he, could I meet you in the middle? And I said, I had this thought, well, I'll meet you in Richmond at the casino. See, I was justifying going to go play and meet this guy to sell him a car. So he said, yeah, I'll meet you there. So I drove down. You were... A Christian, like you I was were a Christian. I just, yet. I just came into the Lord. I was two, three weeks saved, on fire for the Lord, and yet, yet I didn't really see poker. Yet God hadn't revealed. See, sometimes God will sanctification is a process. Some of the things are easy to point out, 
But, you know, I didn't know that I knew that I know, like, gambling for you is a sin, right? So we're driving down to the casino, and I remember saying to my dad, Dad, I, I feel like I'm wasting my time, that I shouldn't be doing this. And as I'm telling him, that now don't text and drive, hear what I'm saying, but a text came in on my phone. And I looked down as I said this to my dad, and a text came in from Jesse, who used to be at the awakening, pa Pastor Mike, and he texted me and said, his devotion was, don't waste your time on worldly things. Right in the same moment. And I looked down and said, Dad, I really don't know if we should be going today. And my dad said, well, we're already halfway there. Let, let's just keep going. He actually... <laughs> fun. Too much fun. Right? <laughs> he encouraged me to go still, believe it or not. But it was a setup from God. Perspective, right? <laughs> it, it was a setup from God because I got to the casino and I sat down and this guy sat next to me and asked me my name. I said, my name's Braden Hall. And he started chatting with me. And then he laughed and showed me his phone. And he said, I'm from Edmonton. I flew down here to play this series. And my buddy said he knows you. And just so you know, he told me you're going to pretend like you don't know what you're doing. But I got you figured out. He said, I know you're a good player. I'm going to watch out for you. And, and he kind of was laughing. But pride again, this pride rose up in me. I said, I don't like this feeling. Like it wasn't this fruit of the spirit. I could feel pride. And I busted out of the tournament. And I was, so I called the guy on the phone that was supposed to, because he wasn't showing up, the guy for the car. So I called him on the phone, and his phone wasn't out of the service area. His phone had been disconnected. It said, this number is not in service. And days after I called, it was still not in service. The same number that I called. And I remember calling Pastor Mike on the phone and saying, Mike, I feel like God's telling me to lay this down. And Mike gave me a word of the Lord, and he said, I feel the same thing. You're supposed to lay this down. And I drove home, and I began to weep and ball and I said God I'll never do I, I make a promise to you, I'm never going to do this I'm not going to play and God's grace was on me for four years I never played cards again I had a moment of weakness I won't even get into that where I played again but for four years God pulled that right out of me of playing poker wow, isn't that, give him a hand isn't that beautiful you guys thank you Jesus so we're going to come back and share a little bit of the summary of this but right now we got a short little um video for those of you dads that are watching by live stream thank you so much for taking the time here and uh, this is a little more of a comedy that's uh that's uh relating to dads and great granddads and and uh, so let's are we ready to go with that there pastor mike let's let it roll hey kids mom needs more help inside hey how many kids do you have? Three. Three? Yeah. That is a good number. Whoa, whoa. Um, let's just concentrate on this one for now. <laughs> hey, what's it like being a dad? Mr. Clams has been sleeping for two days, Daddy. Goodbye, Mr. Clams. No! All right, just slow down a little Dad, bit. stop yelling at me. I don't think that... <gasps> oh! Okay, okay. All right, and that is why we always wear our seatbelt. And that's the birds and the bees. So proud of you, son. Run. Huh? Run, it's gonna blow! No. Have I told you lately? I know, Dad. You love me. You tell me all the time. 
Actually, I was going to tell you I think you're beautiful inside and out. Whatever. Dad, you are disgusting. Yeah, Dad, you are disgusting. This right here goes to your future, this right here goes to you, and this right here goes to God. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How much does God get? What's wrong, beautiful? Trevor broke up with me. Thank you, Lord. He's such a jerk. I, he broke up with me on a text message. He just replied. Dad, I can't believe you! <laughs> Thanks, Dad. He didn't deserve you. <laughs> he didn't deserve you. One, two, three! Heavenly Father, thank you for being so good to us. God has the coolest job. He can make clouds all day. Yeah, he does. But I think one of his very best jobs is when he made you. Daddy. Hey, what's it like being a dad? How much time you got? There you go. Isn't that great? So we're, we're, we've also got a special blessing here. And this would not be just for the dads, but also for just anybody in the room and those of you that are watching the live stream from some of the, um, the fathers from the church that we're relating to quite closely, the Church of Zion in Vancouver. And so we got a number of the senior fathers that want to release a blessing before we go. And then um, we're going to have some ice cream there for, for some of the dads, okay? So we're going to wrap it up probably in about five minutes here, um, Braden and Brian. And so anyway, the, the end of the story is so amazing as, as you just heard Braden getting so deep actually into sin and what was happening. But he comes out because you get fired up for the Lord first, right, Braden? And then after a while, like you said, you were starting to get into a little bit of poker. How did that, how did that all go there, Brian? Well, actually, actually uh, Braden... One night, like he was living at my place, uh, Lois had passed away, so Braden came to live with me. And uh, then one night he said, oh, this guy Kyle, met him at the gym, he wants to go to this awakening thing, and I was here at the church, and I'm like, okay, you're not going without me, because I don't know what this thing is about, right? Because I was now protective of him and not wanting to go down the wrong road, right? So I came with him very first time, and we both got fired up for God. I was lukewarm. Okay. I was backslidden, but in a lukewarm, he was... Anyways, so we came, we got fired up, and, we, and I wasn't driving because of seizures, so he was driving me everywhere I needed to go. So we were here, and uh, Suzanne was trying to get Marika from Abbotsford. That's my wife now, but we weren't married. And she said to him, well, there's this guy. There's a lot of men. Maybe you should come over and find a husband, you know? Suzanne, just so you know. Anyways, and she said, but there's this one guy, Braden, uh, but he, he hangs around with this old guy all the time. <laughs> so we were always hanging out, right? We were always in church. We got fired up. She didn't know I, we were, I was his dad. So anyways, but God brought us through that, through coming together here into an amazing relationship in the Lord. And, and so we just, uh, we, we love each other, I think. Anyways, we're, we're good. And, uh, and we, just, we just love God so much. And so our relationship is close. 
It's been reconciled. I didn't know of the separation, but Braden, you can speak to that. But there's a reconciliation, and that's what God's speaking to us right. for our families, for our for our spiritual families, for the body of Christ, for the and and bringing the world into reconciliation. And so, if you've had, you know, maybe your family's obviously a different story than mine. Maybe there's a lot more pain as a child growing up or whatever. But God is in the business of restoring relationships. He really is, and he wants to help you with that as well. So, Yeah, I would just say, like, my dad is like like a spiritual rock in my life. You know, in the seven years, there's been times it hasn't always been beautiful following the Lord. The first few years, I remember the enemy just trying to take me out, you know, and I'd come to my dad, and they'd, he'd pray for me and encourage me. But I, I felt, too, to just tell people to encourage you. Maybe you don't have a, a physical dad. Maybe, maybe you don't have children. We're talking about all these children. You, you have a desire to have children one day. That at the end, we want to pray for you and bless you. But we want to encourage you that you do have a heavenly father that loves you. And that he wants to father you. Now, whether you have an earthly father or not, your heavenly father, if you will get, spend time to get alone with your heavenly father, he will father, the, father you through this relationship with him. And that's what really counts. But yeah, me, me and my dad... We have a great relationship now, and I'd say it's just deeper now. It is deeper because of what the, the Lord has done and the work that he's done in our lives. And I feel that word that I released today is for a lot of, a lot of us in this house to not just be physical fathers, but to be spiritual fathers and to take our rightful place as that. One, and, one of the things, Ken, that we've experienced is we don't agree on a lot of things. Like seriously, uh, in the awakening, I would, I would just, no, oh, Brayden, it's not like that. You don't understand. And we would, we would, iron sharpens iron, but I was always right anyways. <laughs> and uh, so we don't agree on things and I'm right, but he's, he thinks he's right, he's wrong, but I'm right. But anyways, the thing of it is, the other thing that God is saying is unity. Reconciliation and unity. And you know what? You don't have to agree to be in unity. You can have your differences of opinion and still be in unity because it's in the heart, right? Unity, like we can agree to disagree. And it's so sad in families when they disagree on something that's pretty significant that they break fellowship. And even sometimes parents say, I don't want to ever see you again. Isn't that sad? And, and there's no unity because the heart. But man, we disagree on so much. And yet the unity is there. We love each other. And praise God for that. That's beautiful. I really appreciate also the way, just Braden, you've honored your dad. Uh, it's just wonderful to see because that's, that's so powerful to develop a culture of honor. And that's not just between fathers and sons, sons and fathers, but just e even an atmosphere in the family of God to develop that culture of honor. Well, you know what? We want to bless you also with a father's blessing. And so Pastor Mike has um, a short little video. Some of you um, would recognize these names uh, we, uh, that, that are going to be up here on the screen in just a little bit there. But there's three different fathers here. One was here just Thursday night, Albert Zerb, Albert and Janet Zerb, and just found out actually uh, to the Story family that Albert and Janet Zerb know your dad um, um, uh, really well. And so that dates back, he's I think in his 80s. And we had lunch last week in Chilliwack. So I'd asked Papa Albert as well, um, the leadership team at TC, to say, Let, let's get Papa Albert also to bless us. So are we ready to go, Pastor Mike, with that? Here we go. Happy Father's Day to the family of Transform Central. May we three fathers represent the family to bless you with what the Lord put on our heart. It's regarding the overcomer in the church of Philadelphia. The Lord said, these are the words of him who is holy and who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut. What he shuts, no one can open. For us, the Lord grants us the favor of this key of David for these years. For us, the twofold. First, the key of David represents the worship to bring his presence to dwell among us. The second is the door of the evangelism, open the door to evangelize. So may the Lord grant you the end time anointing 
to complete what the Lord has given to you as a family. The Lord said, I know your DC. I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. And to the overcomers in the central, in the transformed central family, may you receive this key and use it as the Lord directs you. So maybe Papa Daniel will continue. It's such a great joy that we can be together with Albert, Papa Albert and Papa Gideon uh, just to release a blessing to our family, uh, the Transform Central. I just want to bless every father, every grandfather with the best of God's blessing for you on Father's Day. And I pray that the Lord will give you strength, protection, wisdom from above and discernment you know for for every father and grandfather whatever you're facing the lord will give you wisdom how to overcome and i thank you for everyone you know uh, in the transform family because god have chosen you and call you to be a father for the end time and i remember what the lord said in the book Malachi, the heart of the father back to the children and children back to the Father. So I pray for a revival of fatherhood, manhood in the transformed church so that every one of you, one day when you're facing our Lord Jesus Christ, He said, well done, my son, well done. Amen. 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 And one of the reasons that it's so easy and so wonderful for us to send our blessing is because of your receptive hearts because of the way in which you have recognized in your spirit what God is desiring and you've been willing to glean from the fathers so you don't have to repeat and rerun everything but you can build on that and you can go on much further. This is really the dream of fathers to see the next generation blessed and go far beyond. And so with confidence we say, be blessed, take it on, run. We will back you up and at the same time, we release you and pray our blessing upon you that you will take all that God has given us, add more to it by the Spirit, and build that which God has been longing for from the beginning of time. What a joy to be seeing this even in our senior age. And we bless you in Jesus' name. And Amen. happy Father's Day. Amen. 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 Oh, praise the Lord. We just love those men. Praise God. So we're, we're going to bring it to an end here. And thank you so much for coming out here today. Actually, it, I don't feel it's that cool yet. Maybe it's going to get a little warmer as soon as we get outside. Um, I'm going to ask, you know, Brian is a real papa in this house, you guys. He, he's just um, been, a, been so fired up for the Lord. Him and Marika, we so appreciate their heart. They oversee the life groups in Transform Central along with Luke and Suzanne and some other leaders. And if you aren't in a life group as of yet and you would like to experience more family, contact us at the office. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 8 till 12. And we'd love to be able to set you up with one because um, that's really where you experience, you know, the heart of family. So I'm going to ask Papa Brian to just close in a word of prayer. And then Johannes is going to come up here to the front. And, you know, I think what would be best, if you could stay, Andy and Justin and, and Braden, they're the newest fathers in the house, and we're going to have them pass out the ice cream bars. How's that, okay? So, um, so if you're a dad, if you're a dad or a granddad at the end here, come on up here to the front, and uh, we want to give everybody a Magnum ice cream or whatever they got downstairs there, okay? And uh, so, Papa, Brian, you go ahead and just close in a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you for every father in the house and every father that's watching online. God, I pray a blessing upon them. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that leads and guides us. Lord, we've made mistakes. I've made a lot of mistakes as a father, but you're our heavenly father that never makes a mistake. So we lean on you. We lean on you, Father God, and we say blessing to all the fathers. We trust in you. We have no guilt or shame because you have removed that 
by your son's death on the cross. And so we walk in victory and we're proclaiming the gospel and we're moving forward in the kingdom. Amen. Every father. And we pray for every relationship with father and children and grandchildren. God, we pray for restoration in Jesus' name. We pray for healing. We pray for unity. God, we, we see families coming together and we see fathers. And Lord, I just pray. I just believe that on both sides, if you want restoration, the word is go low. Go low. Come with, come in your heart to your, your father or come in your heart to your child and say, I, forgive me, I made a mistake. And just own it and go low and bring down the walls. So we, we come for those walls to come down, walls of separation now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That was power pack. Way to go. All right, you're dismissed. God bless you. And um, come on up here, Andy, Justin, and Brayden. And um, Johannes has the... the um, the ice cream here, and have an awesome, super, super good Father's Day. God bless you. You're dismissed.